Hi everyone. I have bought another calculator and it's a TI this time. And as you can see from the case, we're also in the red LED era, which is what I'm most interested in. This is one that my father actually had. It's a TI-55. This has some basic programming capabilities that I don't think he ever used apart from to play around with. But it does have relatively sophisticated um, statistical functions on it. I have this with the case, which is nice, but I don't have the power supply. And the thing about the 55 and the 65 and that kind of series in HP calculators is that they don't use 9 volt batteries like, you know, the TI-99, if I remember that model number correctly that I had, and the sort of, the sort of cheaper calculators of the line had uh, 9 volt batteries. So this is a U.S. assembly number, a serial number. I don't know how to read any of that stuff from TI. I'm sure somebody does, and I'm sure I could look it up. So this is the battery pack. It uses a NICAD battery pack. The power connector is on the battery pack for the charger, and it uses a, a plug coming out of the battery pack to... Uh, to connect the, the charger in. And I'm going to see if I can get this open because I want to count the cells. I mean, I'm guessing there are one, there are either four or there are three. And that will determine the voltage that this, that this needs. I'm also curious as to what other circuitry might be in there. Um, I'm hoping that we can, that red is positive and just work out some sort of cable, but uh, but we'll see. So I'm going to try opening this side. I've got to say many years ago, I'm going to get a uh, one of these, these cheap Chinese ones, the stickers are coming off of them. And one of the problems with that is that's what keeps you from snagging yourself on the thin metal. So maybe I'll have to buy the real thing. Okay, there we go. Let's see what we've got. Oh, this is very interesting. It's not at all what I expected. Okay. There are two batteries and there's a power supply. Ooh, how do we get this open without breaking everything? There we go. Okay, so we've got leaking NICAD batteries. I presume they're nickel cadmium. Doesn't actually say. One of which has leaked so much that it's uh, knocked the red wire off. But we can see that that's plus. So let's get out the meter and see if we can figure out the relationship of these two pins on the way out with the plus and minus of the battery. Is this just a charging circuit? Or is this a, uh, or is there more to it than that? That looks like an inductor. Huh. We've got a diode to prevent you from plugging this in backwards, possibly. Looks like it. Okay, so let's go, ha let's have a look. And, uh, and see what we've got. So what I'm curious is to whether this red, which is battery positive, does that go through? It does. Okay, let me get a marker. And now we get into the question of, has my daughter stolen all my markers from up here? Signs point to yes. Okay. So we're going to mark green, actually we'll just mark positive there. So I've marked positive right there because I don't have a red marker to mark it with. Now let's try the black wire here. 
I must have gotten myself confused with this wiring early on. This board is very hard to trace. I mean, there's not much to it, but... Uh, the other thing I could do, of course, is look up this chip, right, and figure out what the pinout is. That would be the other way of being sure, but that's... Where's the diode? There's the one ohm resistor. No, I'm completely wrong. It does go through the, the chip. Well, I'm going to have to look at some sort of documentation on this. This has become far more interesting than I expected it to be. To be continued. Good evening again, everyone. I'm back. It is several hours later. And, well, let me show you where I am. I have powered the calculator. It's working. I mean, I haven't tried every function, but there's a working calculator. It is. It might have some keyboard issues. Something's been spilled on it at some point. This actually, unlike my father's version of this calculator, looks like a heavily used one, which is great. Um, but as far as I can tell, the basic functions work. So let me tell you what I did, right? What the problem was. And, and we'll take it from there. So, this is the battery. But you'll notice it's not just a battery. It's a power supply. And it wasn't clear to me what was going on with this. So, did this... Was this a step-up power supply to give you... This is the power in, this is the power out. Was it to, was it to give you... 3 volts off of these? Was it to give you 5 volts, 6 volts, 9 volts? Not sure. But, oh, this switch is very stiff. Might try taking this apart more in the future, although not in this video. This, the Digimatic, has a step-up power supply in it, and it steps up two nickel cadmium batteries to about 8.5 volts, I think I've got it set at in here. Um, there's a uh, potentiometer that sets the voltage, and I turned it up because I wanted the display a little brighter than it was, and I assumed it was designed to run at 9 volts-ish. So that seems reasonable. This is later. This is late 70s or early 80s. I haven't looked up the TI-55 model. Um, I'll put an actual date for it in the comments below, or possibly um, in text below this image. So, so what to do, how to get this started. But if you saw the earlier half of this video, you know this is quite chewed up. This is where the battery attached, but the likelihood of soldering anything onto that easily isn't very high. And I was also concerned, although most of these pins on this chip are common together, right? Those are common together, that's separate, that's separate. These appear to be common together here, too. And let me poke with something. So these and these. So that's probably the power regulation side. And then these would be the synth side, presumably. Um, this one doesn't seem to be attached to anything, actually. And this one comes along here. And yeah, is attached to the power rail. So that would be the synth side. And that would explain this resistor, right? That's the sense resistor for the uh, for the power supply, presumably. Something like that. I don't know. I don't really... It's a very simple circuit board, but I don't claim to understand it. It would be possible, of course, to look up this chip, since it's a TI chip. It's... Uh, it says 127 down the side. I don't know what that is. And it says BP... 
5IC-3A, and then Malaysia. That's probably the chip number. This is AC on the top. This, my guess, is a, uh, an inductor. Right? It's going to be a step up. It's going to drive the inductor. And then it's got a big old capacitor, which seems fine. This diode looks like polarity protection from the wall plug. So, fairly straightforward. In fact, not very different from anything that you might see in a, uh, in a current um, power supply, something similar. So the question is, so it's, it's, a, it's a buck boost, right? So, uh, so then I had to play and see, well, okay, I couldn't plug the batteries in because these terminals were eaten up and I didn't feel like fighting with trying to solder to that. So eventually what I did is I tried different voltages on the power in pins here. Um, I wasn't too concerned about the polarity since there's a protection diode. And I try 3 volts. Excuse me, that made a horrible noise. And I tried 5 volts. This is a relatively useful cheater cable to use with dumb dollar store power banks. That's great because these are current limited, right? So uh, this is a pretty useful thing. And if you short it, again, it shuts off. No harm done. Um, this briefly gave me uh, about 8.8 .8 volts across these two pins. So what do we know then? We know that it's uh, probably designed for 9 volts or just under. Okay, so this thing is unreliable, not sure what to do with it. The second problem had to do with, and you'll see what I did once you flip it over. I flip it over with this plug because it quite clearly, and it, this was in the earlier part of the video as well, that this red cable is negative, or red wire is negative, and the black one is positive. TI, probably on purpose too. Right? So that was something I could also tell because this worked briefly. Now, I put 5 volts on it, but we're talking late 70s, early 80s. I bet it's designed for 6. So that might be something to try, although I don't think I have a 6 volt, I have a 6.5 volt power supply that I could maybe do something with. Anyway, won't throw that out, we'll keep that. But, so what I did is I put a couple of pins on a battery um, clip, put them in here. You'll notice labeled plus and minus by me. And boom, working calculator. Now I've got two possible things that I could do for this. Now, the less expensive calculators from the series, and I had one which I remember is the TI-99, but that might not be right, which is just a, or maybe TI-35, but that seems like I'm mixing it up with an HP model number. Anyway, the, uh, that one was 9-volt uh, battery powered, but the same basic physical design. And my guess is you could get a lid from one of those, pop it on here, but I also think I could probably just Dremel off these little spots and then this would close over this battery just fine. So that's probably what I'm going to do. The other option of course would be to rebuild this because if this works, and I kind of think it might, then there's, you know, let's fight with soldering things on and we could put a couple of, you know, my cordless phone, X cordless phone, nickel metal hydrides in there and uh, that would work, right? The nickel metal hydrides would be a drop-in replacement and we just make an adapter for a 6-volt power supply. So that was really quite interesting. I mean, it's interesting that the power supply is in the battery pack, not in the calculator. I wouldn't have guessed that. I assumed this was going to be a 3-cell battery pack. And I kind of assumed that I would just stuff it with um, 
three nickel metal hydrides and call it a day. But that's not going to happen. And uh, but this, despite a lot of thinking and worrying about it, because I really did want to put nine volts on this if it was di designed for three or six. But a lot of thinking about it made it clear that this was this was worth a try, and. Figuring out this reverse polarity was, and being sure enough about it to plug in a battery was a, uh, yeah, an interesting <laughs> uh, uh, game. I assume that if you put this in backwards, well, there might be a diode on it. If it actually runs at eight volts or something internally, then there might be a diode on it to protect it. But uh, only find that out if I decide to open this up. Yeah, so one quick bit of dribbling later and the back fits. And we now have 9 volt powered TI-55. And bits of plastic everywhere. But that's par for the course. Have a good evening. Hope you enjoyed this look at this calculator. I know I'm fairly enthused by 1970s and early 80s calculators. I do realize they're not the most popular videos, but I'm going to keep doing them because I like them. All right, have a good evening. Thanks.